Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to have you here because I have a Hobby Lobby DIY video for you. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. I am so excited y'all are here and this project turned out beautifully. So we're gonna start off with this wood round tray sign, whatever you wanna call it. Originally it was $22.99. I got it on sale for 50% off at Hobby Lobby Hobby Lobby during their spring sale and I take the stain that I picked up from Hobby Lobby that same day and I give it a good coat on the bottom as well as the inside bottom if that makes sense. Now this stain was pretty hard to work with. It's a gel stain so my foam brush was working a lot better than that brush that you just saw me using did. However, the foam brush and the paintbrush both were really difficult to use with this stain but it's such a beautiful color that I just stuck with it and once you get the hang of it then it's not as difficult but just know that gel stain is a little bit trickier to work with than a traditional stain or a water-based stain so like I said I stained the bottom and then I'm just going to do the inside bottom as well focusing on the edges at first and then staining the inside so I set that to dry and then I took my candlestick holders that I got in the same Hobby Lobby trip and I painted those with my fluff Dixie Belle paint I wasn't really strict on getting every single piece of it covered because we're going to distress these anyway so no big deal if you give these a distressed coat of paint next i go in to that outer edge of this tray and i also give that a distressed coat of my dixie bell fluff white paint And then for the inner edge, now this is a little bit tricky to do, but if you just take your time, you don't need to tape it off or anything. Just lean this up if you decide to do this project. Lean it up and then it's really easy to just load up your brush and run it along that edge. As long as you're really careful and you take your time, it's really not hard to stay away from that bottom part. So once that was done then i go into the middle of course y'all know me if you've been around for any amount of time i love my dry brushing um, i'm doing away with it so much but for this project i just felt to tie all of the pieces together that the um, white dry brushing would look really nice so i did go heavy handed dry brush on the inside if you don't like dry brushing totally skip that part now again to tie in the brown i go in with that stain that i used and i also go heavy handed dry brushing on the edges now before we put the feet on i wanted to show you how cute this is for just like a little ottoman rest i don't know what you want to call it let me know in the comments what you would call this i guess an ottoman tray i'm not really too sure but i love this look as well so let me show you the next look so take the feet and you're going to distress those with that stain once again so everything ties together now for the feet i did wipe it off after i dry brushed because i did go pretty heavy handed and the reasoning for this was i wanted the feet to stand out so that way when it's sitting on your table you can really see those gorgeous details so that's the reason i went pretty heavy handed but once again if you don't like dry brushing just leave it out in order to get our feet evenly placed, I put my tape measure down and then I marked 11 and a half inches since, or 11 inches, I'm sorry, since this is a 22 inch round, um, 11 is your middle. So I just kind of made um, two marks on either side because this was not long enough to go across the whole thing and mark it. So I wanted to make sure that they would line up evenly. So I just made a mark on either side of my tape measure and I did that for both sides and then I placed a mark where the crosses would be on all four corners if that makes sense 
Now to finish this off, all I did was take some wood glue, put that on my candlestick holder, and then I also placed a few dabs of hot glue wherever I did not have wood glue because the wood glue is going to ensure that your hold lasts and the hot glue is going to make sure that it uh, holds quickly that way you don't have it moving around on you and then last but not least I placed them down and I absolutely love the way that this turned out you guys I made this for about 12 bucks because I also got the feet on sale so let me know actually I don't think the candlestick I'm not sure. I don't think the candlesticks were on sale, but nonetheless, even if this did cost me 15 bucks, it's really high end looking. It's a really nice size and I think it's a really good deal. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Do you like it better on the ottoman or do you like it better on the tabletop? And then this was my husband's idea. He's so smart, you guys. He was like, that would be really cool on the kitchen table with your little lazy Susan and we can put like spices and all that kind of stuff and then that way when any, when anybody needs it they could just spin it and take their spice so I thought that was a really cool idea and I wanted to show you um, his idea Moving on to DIY two and three. Now I kind of did these in tandem because we're gonna be taking almost the exact same steps for both of them. So I take out two of my 14 inch wood rounds from Hobby Lobby. And yes, let me put a quick disclaimer, my kids are home. I meant to say this, so if you guys hear them, that's why it just comes with the territory. I'm a stay at home mom and it just is what it is. So anyway, I take my wood rounds from Hobby Lobby. One of them I stain with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain and then the other one I use that gel stain that we've been using from Hobby Lobby and I have to say they are two totally different looks two totally different consistencies and I really enjoy them both so I can't really pick a favorite um now this one like I said before is a little bit harder to work with but Again, it just comes with the territory. Um, not everything in crafting is super easy, so it just is what it is. But I really like the that they are both a different color brown. Um, so for the first one, we're going to do the darker one. And I do have two free printables linked in the description box below. I will also do my best to link it in the pinned comment. Um, but I will have that for you guys. So if you guys want to make these signs, then you are more than welcome to do that. But I take my first one. It says welcome-ish. <laughs> it depends who you are and what you want. And that is so true. So um, I, like I said, I cut that out. That way I can see where I need to tape it off. I mark it and then I take my painter's tape and mark and uh, tape off that section. Once that section was taped off, I went in with my Dollar Tree chalkboard paint. Now, if you guys are going to do this project, please just do as I say, not as I do. Do not use the chalkboard paint. If you use the graphite paper, you will not be able to see where you're tracing your little sign. So if you use chalk paint, then you are able to see it. So just skip the chalkboard paint and go straight for um, actual chalk paint. And then I go in with my graphite paper and I trace that out. Next, I go in with my white paint pen that I just got from Hobby Lobby. And I have to say, you guys, I have used a lot a lot of paint a lot of paint pens in my day and this is by far the best white paint pen that i have ever used i will definitely always pick up my white paint pens from hobby lobby because the other ones the pigment is just not very deep and it's kind of like see-through they're really hard to work with the paint never wants to come out i don't know what it is with white but I just never have good luck with white paint pens. So I definitely will be br buying this brand again. Now the black one is another story. We'll talk about that in a minute. So after I was done tracing my wording out, 
or I should say going over my wording with my white paint pen. Then I just grab some greenery, some random greenery I had in my stash and I cut the pick apart and then I use my wire to kind of tie them together in either direction. That way it's much easier for me to glue this down and then I glue it down with some hot glue. Once I was done gluing that down, now we're going to make a bow. And I'm going to run through this quickly because I actually have a, an entire tutorial of how to make 11 different bows really, really easily. So I will link that in the cards in the right hand corner. But for this particular bow, all you do is cut seven different pieces of ribbon about, I don't know, 12 inches long maybe I'm not exactly too sure on the exact measurements I kind of just eyeball it and then you're going to want to fold it almost halfway down but not quite and then pinch it in the middle and you're going to add that to your bunch once you have it nice and full the way that your eyes like it to be <laughs> then you're going to take a zip tie and tie that off at the bottom and then you're literally ready to put that on your sign. Now, some people dovetail all of these ends. Um, had I made them a little longer, I probably would have, but I did not end up doing that since my ends were not that long. And then to attach this, I don't recommend to staple it. My staples were a lot longer than I needed them to be. So I did end up just hot gluing it and then stapling it in maybe like a thicker part of the bow. But because these wood rounds are so thin, um, I definitely recommend to just hot glue your bow down. And then literally, you guys, that was it. I think this looks so high-end, so farmhousey, and I absolutely love the way that it turned out. But, of course, I can never pick between this round and the other one I'm about to show you. So as always, let me know what you guys think. I guess I forgot to mention that we're going to add a hanger. Duh, Melissa. <laughs> Getting a little ahead of myself. So to hang this, I just cut another piece of ribbon. I folded it kind of towards each other. I don't know what kind of fold this is and then glued it to the back and that was it you guys. Look how gorgeous this turned out. It looks so cute on my front door and I can't wait to show you the next one. For the second wood round, we're pretty much going to do the exact same steps. I take that Hello free printable that I made for you guys. I cut it up and then I uh, marked where I needed my tape to go. I taped it off and then I painted that middle part with my Dixie Belle fluff paint, giving it a distressed coat not worrying about getting every little piece covered because I personally, once again, like that distressed look. And my hubby is so cute, you guys. He came in my shed and was trying to tell me how to find the center. Even though I knew how to find it, I just let him show me because he enjoys like teaching me stuff. So I just thought that was really cute and wanted to leave that in. But like I said, um, I gave it a distress coat in the middle and pulling back that tape is always so satisfying. Now I knew that I wanted to have two uh, black stripes on the top and the bottom. So I just eyeballed this. Um, I didn't measure it or anything. I just kind of eyeballed the lines and placed down that tape on the top and bottom. And then I used my Dixie Belle caviar black chalk paint to cover those lines. I once again peel back that painter's tape to reveal those gorgeous crisp lines and I also wanted to mention that I do always make sure to get the sides as well to make sure that it all looks nice and cohesive. Next I go in once again with my graphite paper and my free printable and I trace that out and then I go in with my black paint marker that I got from Hobby Lobby and this is the one I was telling you about that I'm not really too impressed with. I like the Sharpie brand or the Arteza brand much better but I did end up sticking with this one and 
with a little bit of patience, I did um, get this to work better, but once again, I still would grab for a Sharpie or an Arteza black paint marker. I then go in with a very tiny paintbrush and my Dixie Belle fluff chalk paint and I just kind of put a few little highlights on the lettering. Now I kind of followed the printable that I printed out. Um, the only thing I did not follow was on the O. It did not have any shadow parts so I did just kind of use my imagination and put them where I thought that they looked good. So I did just want to leave all of this here. That way if you guys want to copy exactly what I did then you will have it. Now to finish this one off I did the exact same thing with the greenery just using lamb's ear from Walmart this time. If you guys have been around y'all know that I love Walmart's floral. They're such a good deal um, and they're really high-end looking so I always shop there first for my floral. Um, but I did the exact same thing, glued that down. I also made another simple bow, glued that down to the middle of the greenery at the top as well. And then I just took some greenery from Dollar Tree and kind of filled in the empty spots. And last but not least, I took a rope hanger on the back and glued that down with some hot glue. Um, I added some cotton to the greenery as well. And that was it, you guys. I absolutely love the way that this sign turned out. So as always, let me know what you think. Okay friends, probably the moment most of you have been waiting for, this little interchangeable truck that I got from Hobby Lobby. I believe I got it for like three bucks, which I thought was a really good deal. So to start off, I take a grapevine wreath from Dollar Tree and some random greenery that I had. And honestly, you guys, I didn't have enough to go all the way around, which ended up being perfect because I actually love the way that this looks with the truck glued down to the part with no greenery. You'll see what I'm saying here in a minute, but I just place my greenery um, going in one direction and then um, at the bottom going towards the other direction. Just a few um, picks, not all of them. So kind of like um, two thirds went one way and one third went the other way, if that makes sense. And then for the truck, I started off painting the hubcaps with my sterling silver that I got from Walmart and then for the wheels I just go in with my fluff Dixie Belle for the white part and then for the black part I used my caviar Dixie Belle chalk paint. Next I gave my truck a really good coat of that same Dixie Belle fluff paint. Again not being really strict about covering every little crevice. Um, now in the end, I do go in and highlight all of those little parts where the laser had kind of engraved it, if you will. Um, I did not want to paint over those, but it's kind of hard not to. <laughs> so I painted my truck and then I went in with my smaller black paint pen and I just kind of highlighted all of those pieces that are supposed to be um, standing out, I guess, if you will. I don't know, you guys. Y'all know I can't ever find my words. It's really hard to speak, I guess, these days. I don't know. Anyway, um, once I was done going over all of those little details, I and I didn't go really heavy-handed. Um, if you would like to, you can but I ended up sanding it down anyway because I just wanted this to be very light just like those little parts were. So that's why I decided to sand that down. And then once I was done that, then I went into the windshield. I painted that with my sterling silver. And then to finish this truck off, 
I dry brushed all the way around the truck. Yeah, 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 I know I said that backwards, big deal. I dry brushed and then I realized that I would like my hood to be silver, so I painted that, let that dry, and then dry brushed over that part so that it all looked cohesive. To attach my truck, all I did was lay it where I wanted it to be, and then I used some hot glue to secure that in place, flipping it over to, again, make sure that it stays in place by reinforcing it from the back with some hot glue. Once again, refer to my bow making video that I linked in the cards in the beginning of the video if you guys want a more in-depth tutorial on how to make a bow. And then all I did was make a simple bow, glued that to the part where the greenery was going in opposite directions, and that was it. Look how gorgeous this truck looks by itself. I absolutely love it, but I'm about to show you what I did with all the other pieces. Now, again, I know I'm going to keep saying this, but it's stuff that I repeat. So if you've been around for any length of time, then you guys know that there's just something about watercoloring that I just absolutely love. It's so peaceful and relaxing, and it's really fun to do. So any time that I can, I pull out my watercolors. So for the spring, I knew that I wanted my flowers to look really washed out. So that's why I decided to go in with my watercolors. Now there was no rhyme or reason. I'm no professional. I literally have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just kind of playing around with colors. So once I get the color that I like for each part, like the blades of grass or the middle of the daffodils or the tulip, then I just take my brush and I go over those little parts trying to make shadows and make it look as realistic as possible but once again y'all i'm no expert i literally have no idea what i'm doing so just do it until your eyes are happy um you don't have to be a professional to do things you don't even have to know what you're doing as long as you try and do your best to do it right then that's all we can do right so anyway um i'm gonna let this play I just did green for the um, blades of, or you know, the stems, obviously. Um, I picked a few beautiful colors for the flowers. I love how the butterfly turned out, and then those daffodils are just absolutely stunning. Um, and I absolutely love the way that this spring piece turned out. So for the flags and stars, I went in with my Waverly Crimson Red paint and obviously I painted the stripes and then some of the stars and I just kind of used red, white, and blue. Obviously for the flag, I used the traditional colors exactly how it was supposed to be and then for the stars, I just eyeballed it. Um, there was no, again, rhyme or reason to the color placement, but I did know that I wanted to incorporate some glitter since, you know, Memorial Day, 4th of July, you think of fireworks and shiny things. So that's why I decided to do glitter on this one. And I also used my watercolors for that blue part. And then once that was dry, I went in with some Dixie Belle fluff to highlight the stars and um, I'm just gonna let this play because I'm just having fun doing this you guys this is again not something I normally would have done so I appreciate you guys wanting me to do this because I know that I had such a ball doing it Now for the glitter part, to get that to stick to my little sign, all I did was take a really small paintbrush and some Mod Podge from Dollar Tree and place that down on the spots that I wanted glitter. Thank you. 
Last but not least, I shook that glitter off and I love this piece. I don't know, this one might be my favorite. I love the way that gold looks against that watercolor blue and the red and the white. I just absolutely love the way this turned out. So let me know which piece is your favorite. For the fall piece, I took that same gel stain that we've been using. I believe it's called Oak by, I'm not sure the brand, um, but I went in with that same gel stain and I just stained those pumpkin stems. And then, y'all, I am no expert. I don't even know if the way that I shade and do my paintings is correct, but the thing about it is I try my best and that's literally all you can do. So I went in with my Waverly Pumpkin, my Waverly Cashew, and my Waverly Moss Paint, and I just kind of eyeballed, I don't know, there was no um, pattern that I was going for, I just kinda kept all the colors separate. Um, so I kind of kept the green away from each other as best as I could, etc. And then I, once I was done with the main colors, then I went in with all the different colors and I just kind of gave it shadows and I just painted until, again, my eyes were happy. And literally, you guys, that was it for this piece. Um, I'm not sure if I love it, but I know I definitely like it. So let me know what you guys think. Would you have left the shadow off or would you have done the shadows yourself? And last but not least, let's do the winter piece. Now I took my Moss Waverly chalk paint and I loaded up my brush and then the way that I painted this was kind of going in the direction that the branches would go in. I don't really know exactly how to explain it, but you can see what I'm doing here. And I also wanted to mention that if you guys are still here and have watched the entire video, leave a Christmas tree emoji in the comments. That way I know that you guys are still here and just know I appreciate you guys so much. So once I was done with the moss, then I went in with a tiny paintbrush and my Cashew Waverly paint, and I just kind of, once again, went in the direction that the branches would go. And then to tone that color down, I went in with some more of that moss and just kind of, again, toned it down. Then I went in with my mini chip brush and my fluff uh, Dixie Bell, I almost said Waverly, my fluff Dixie Bell paint, and I started by dry brushing the edges, and then I realized that if I dipped my brush in the paint and kind of dabbed it on the edges, then it would look more realistic and look like snow, so that's what I went ahead and did. I absolutely love this technique. I think it turned out so amazing, so um, to finish this piece off, I wanted to again, where those laser pieces are supposed to show. I wanted you to be able to see them, so I went in with my small paint pen. I went over them and then to, or I should say my black paint pen, and then to tone that black color down, I just went over that lightly with my white Dixie Belle paint. And that was it, you guys. That is it for this video. I absolutely love every single piece and I'm so excited to get back to farmhouse decor. So let me know down in the comments which project was your favorite as always. I love to hear your opinions and that also helps me for future videos to bring you guys content that you like. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, share this video out. Um, it really helps my channel to grow and I'm really shooting to hit 100K by the time little baby boy is born in October. So that is a big goal of mine and the only way I can do that is with your guys' help. So I appreciate you guys so much. Just know that if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy. You are gorgeous. You literally can do anything you put your mind to because you are so strong and I know that you can do it. So with all that being said, you guys, I love you so much. 
thank you for bringing me purpose in my life. I also just recently lost 60 pounds in six months with no crazy dieting or strict schedule or anything like that. So if you guys want any of that information, I will leave the info linked in the cards or I'm sorry, linked in the pinned comment in the comment section. And I will also just tell you that if you go in the description, description box go to my link tree send me a friend request on my personal facebook page you will see it personal facebook um, friend request me and then send me a message that says ketones and i will get you guys all hooked up with some information i found a new passion for helping people feel better again as well as showing them how to make cheap decor for their homes and make it beautiful and that's my gig now you guys so anyway don't forget to stop like comment share and subscribe because none of this is possible without you guys i love you so much and i'll catch you in the next one bye Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.